Welcome back nerd squad, today we'll be looking at one of the most sinister villains in X-Men and Marvel history, Mr. Sinister obviously. As it is October, I thought it best to dress the part, like I did last year for my alternate Cyclops video. So I will be Amanda McKnight, but as... Cyclops today. As we count down the top 10 scary Mr. Sinister facts that you need to know. If you are a huge X-Men fan like myself, you might already be super familiar or obsessed with Mr. Sinister. And if you are or if you aren't, I want to know how many of these facts were new to you today. So be sure to share with us in the comments below which of these scary facts you found the most terrifying and the most surprising. Mr. Sinister made his first appearance in the Uncanny X-Men series in 1987, hence his very 80s look and the geneticist and powerful telepathic shape-shifting villain has been performing tests on any X-Men he can get his hands on since then. Alright, let's take a closer look at some of the scariest things about this overall terrifying villain as we get counting. Number 10, his wife died. It wasn't just the fact that she died, it was sort of the way in which she died. Mr. Sinister was once Nathaniel Essex in the 1800s, living as an academic, a doctor, and a student of Darwinism, obsessed with the next step in human evolution. His wife, Rebecca, found out about his experiments on humans in this regard and was shocked. This caused her to go into early labor as she was very pregnant at the time. As a result, the baby was stillborn. She managed to free Dr. Essex's experiments, but unfortunately died as a result of the stress of the whole situation. With her last dying breath, she gave Nathaniel the name he would later take up. You see, he had been about to ally himself with Apocalypse at the time, but Jean Grey warned him of the destruction that would befall the planet if he did, and instead he decided to return to his wife and dedicate himself to his family. All too late, unfortunately. His wife swore she could not forgive him before passing away, calling him utterly and contemptibly sinister. As a result, he would join up with Apocalypse and be transformed, claiming the new name name Mr. Sinister. I mean, he is still a doctor, so sort of Dr. Sinister. Number 9 stole a Celestial's powers. At one point, Mr. Sinister ran into Tiamat, who was sleeping, and managed to siphon off some of the Celestial's powers. He used the powers to create an entire city filled with Sinister clones, inspired by Victorian London in appearance. As frightening as one Mr. Sinister is, you can imagine how terrifying an entire city comprised of his clones would be. Fortunately, the city was destroyed by the Phoenix Five. Number 8 Manipulated Cyclops. Most people are familiar with Mr. Sinister's involvement in the creation of Cable, but for those who aren't, allow me to explain. Mr. Sinister has an unhealthy obsession with Cyclops, believing him to be the perfect specimen. Of course, Sinister has an unhealthy obsession with a lot of things, but his involvement with Scott as a result of his obsession and the Summer's line is kind of on a whole other level. Sinister cloned Jean Grey, creating Madeline Pryor, knowing that Scott would end up with Madeline Pryor and that the two of them would have children. And he was right, and Madeline gave birth to a baby named Nathan. Nathan then grew up and ended up becoming Cable. Beyond even just the manipulation of who Cyclops would mate with though, it has also been revealed that Mr. Sinister has been messing with Cyclops' life since he was a child. Sinister experimented on Cyclops when he was just a kid for basically an entire year. He is also the man responsible for the separation of Alex and Scott when their parents died in a plane accident. Number 7 Created the Marauders Well, Really, even more shockingly, Gambit kind of created the Marauders, but he did it all for Mr. Sinister. Remember when it was revealed that Gambit had a dark secret, and everyone thought it was going to be that he was the witness and the person who ended up betraying the X-Men? Well, it wasn't that. The secret was that he had worked for Mr. Sinister as a retroactive favor after Mr. Sinister helped him to gain control over his powers by removing a part of his brain. Ugh. Also, now Mr. Sinister has that part of his brain, so yeah. Mr. Sinister had Gambit assemble the Marauders and used them to attack the Morlocks, who he believed were abominations when it came to his pursuit of genetic advancement, and had them hunt down and steal baby Nathan from Madeline Pryor. All sorts of evil stuff. Number 6 Influence the High Evolutionary In the 1920s, Nathaniel Essex's research would live on to inspire another villain in the making, obsessed with genetics, Herbert Wyndham. Wyndham, fascinated by Essex's research, was inspired to do
do his own testing. Though fortunately not on humans, but still on rats. Still, his work would later be considered to be controversial enough to see him expelled from Oxford University. Wyndham would later go on to become the High Evolutionary. The Evolutionary played a role in the Maximoff twins' troubled past, and helped to transform Jessica Drew into Spider Woman, and later would also work alongside Mr. Sinister, helping to depower all of mutant kind. Mr. Sinister has a ton of evil students actually, fun fact. Including Dark Beast. Number five, release the legacy virus. Okay, so he didn't do it on purpose, but still, Mr. Sinister was the one responsible for releasing the legacy virus. Strife had created the virus and passed on a canister containing it to Mr. Sinister, claiming that the canister actually contained thousands of years worth of genetic material in regards to the Summer's bloodline. Foolishly, Mr. Sinister had the canister opened, only to find it was empty and accidentally released the legacy virus into the world, so named because it was Strife's legacy gift to the world after his death. Quite the gift. Mr. Sinister then frantically worked to cure it, so it wouldn't kill all of mutant kind. However, he was beaten to the discovery of a cure by Moira McTaggart, who actually was dying as she figured it out, passing the information along to Professor X through his telepathy. Number 4. Miss Sinister One of the creepiest things about Mr. Sinister is he is nearly immortal due to his obsession with genetics and cloning. He even built a failsafe in regards to his preservation in the event of his demise. He injected one of his test subjects, Claudine Renko, with a virus that upon his death would activate. This ended up transforming her into the perfect female genetic clone of Mr. Sinister. As such, she also became obsessed with manipulating the X-Men and causing harm to innocent life through experimentation. After being stabbed by Dakon for messing with him, she seeks out and traps X-23 in an attempt to transfer her consciousness into Laura's body and escape the overwhelming consciousness of Mr. Sinister, which has been plaguing her mind. Her plot ended up being foiled by Mr. Sinister himself, who invaded X-23. X-23's mind and forced her to attack Miss Sinister. X-23 escaped along with Gambit who was accompanying her at the time, and a girl named Alice, a clone who had actually led them to Miss Sinister. However, Miss Sinister managed to just barely survive this encounter, and so did Mr. Sinister who had taken possession of the fifth clone of Alice, transferring his consciousness into her. So now we have a creepy young girl version of Mr. Sinister in this story. Ugh. Number 3. Essex House An interesting and disturbing easter egg can be found in Deadpool 2 that is a reference to Mr. Sinister. Did you manage to spot it? The orphanage that Russell and Domino were raised in was called the Essex House of Mutant Rehabilitation. While I don't think Nathaniel Essex would think of abusing mutants for religious reasons, like the headmaster did, Mr. Sinister would definitely have tortured the children there in regards to experimentation and testing. The orphanage is stated as being owned by the Essex Essex Corporation, which has also been referred to in other X-Men films. A corporation that was obsessed with collecting genetic mutant material. Hmm, how interesting. Mr. Sinister was even rumored to have been the big bad in the film Logan, however he never appeared there. Guess we'll have to wait and see if he appears in the MCU's version of X-Men? Totally would have made sense that he was behind X-23's cloning and everything, but whatever. Number 2. Experimented on his son Nathaniel's son died of a natural malady that he was born with. He was malformed and apparently was too weak to live. We later find out that after his son's death, he dug him back up and uh, utilized his recently deceased son's corpse in a series of experiments. The goal of his work was noble to help prevent the condition his son died from in others, but he still managed to shock his wife to death with this. Beyond that, it's implied that Nathaniel may have experimented on his son while he was alive, trying to cure or fix him of his natural ailment. Which, like, sure, he's just trying to be a doctor, but also, like, WTF? That's kind of messed up. Number 1. Worked as a scientist at Auschwitz Mr. Sinister was actually allied with the Nazis during World War II, unsurprisingly. Shockingly though, he worked as a scientist at Auschwitz, where he was given the right to take anyone from the concentration camp that he so chose. He could even save people who were just about to enter the gas chamber. I use the term save, of course, lightly. What he was really doing was taking people to experiment on, in particular searching for mutants among those trapped in the camp. He was given the nickname Nosferatu, as it was rumored he would give you sweet in exchange for a blood sample. Even German soldiers were afraid of this Mr. Sinister. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this list somewhat spooky. I personally think almost everything about Mr. Sinister is scary. Well, except for the fact that the visual design of his character was apparently inspired by the idea of what a child would create if they thought of a villain. And his over the top look definitely gives you kind of that feel. But he was transformed by Apocalypse, so you probably shouldn't laugh at his appearance, lest Mr. Sinister or Ensabanur himself 
pop up behind you. Who are your favorite X-Men villains? How do you feel about Mr. Sinister possibly making an appearance in a future X-Men or MCU film? What are some of your favorite Mr. Sinister moments or facts? Let us know in the comments below. And while you are on your way down there, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring our bell so you stay in the know about all of our nerdy lists. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight slash Cyclops reminding you to stay nerdy YouTube.